Welcome. My name is Lavina Archers. You're listening to the International Human Design School. We're talking about the Root of Communications intro. And this is part one of diving into the understanding of your own personal design this week. Our primary focus is on your personal analysis of throat gates, and I'm going to be using examples of famous raves, we call them famous people's designs, to talk about some of the issues that you might be facing as examples. Now, when we look at the gates of your throat within the context of your human design, throat gates, and I'm going to pull up a different image here, throat gates are all here and you can see where they are in the wheel. They're in the quarter of civilization. This is about purpose fulfilled through form. So all of these throat gates, the ones in brown here, you see how they kind of highlight a little bit when we're looking at them. The throat gates are the ones that are responsible for communicating as well as either primary gates of action that are going to be expressed or they're indirectly responsible for action if they're connected up to energy. So throat gates are all key expressions in the world of form. These are the civilizing effects that these throat gates have when we're communicating with each, each other. It's one of the most important things that you can experience as far as the benefits of human design in your life by studying with the official source materials like the International Human Design School or Jovian Archive Media, you're going to find the source of the material, the person who founded this information, Ra Ruhu, had very specific keynotes. Keynotes are simply word formulas or phrases that help us access and describe certain genetic potentials that are built within us. So, in order that we understand communication, we first have to look at the throat center. This is very important. Your gates or channels that are there in the throat center are critical key core components of who you are. So when you're looking at a design, it's important to see the value relative to this throat center definition or lack thereof all roads in this body graph lead to the throat. Just like all roads lead to Rome, the throat center is Rome. So this is the hub of manifestation, metamorphosis. It's not just about manifest stores. Anybody can manifest because anybody can be conditioned to manifest. But everything in life or life on this material, physical plane, the world of form, this is the central hub of that. And so when we come to the throat center, it's different from all the other centers. It really is very, very different according to a couple of key ways. And in the context of what we're looking at again, these throat gates, all of them are skilled in articulation. So if you are defined in your design, as, as an example, manifestors are always going to def be defined at the throat. If you're defined here, you have a fixed style of speaking or acting, and we're dealing with the most complex of all the centers, period. All those gates running through a band in the quarter of the wheel we call civilization, all of these, if this is your personality son, your purpose is fulfilled through form guiding form, manifesting form, building form, evaluating form, reflecting form. These communication aspects in the second quarter of this mandala wheel is where we establish and maintain the form principle in this planet, on this planet. So from the context of why it's so critical and key, when you're looking at this throat center, Every single one of those throat gates, skilled in communication or learning, if it's undefined in your design, the center itself, and you've got a planetary life aspect, so to go back to an example chart, when you've got a planetary life aspect that is undefined and you've got dormant gate activations, think of this place like the school that you're going to, you as a student, anything that's defined in you as a student, and anything that's open in your design is the school that you're going to 
And these are the teachers that are teaching you something incredible. And what's interesting about this particular design is we can see we actually have four planetary life aspects. So four teachers within the context of communication. And all of these gates, all of them, biologically, the correlation or the association that we talk about in human design, because we know there are genetic imprints, they all have to do with the thyroid. So in this sense, the throat has the ability to be a gearbox or regulate energy expression or manifest form on the planet. So from the perspective of being able to understand all of these 11 throat gates, every single one of them is connected to the same biological function. It's not like the heart where we have four different biological distinct associations, one for each gate. Here it's just one thing, and that is your thyroid. Thyroid issues are a common problem in this day and age. Now it's something to recognize about this unity of one biological correspondence. That is about what we call the voice, your voice. It is about the quality of the voice as you're expressing when it comes to communication issues, not necessarily always the words. So language that comes out of us, us, the articulation of language, up here metamorphically turning light into sound, frequencies or word formulas, and seeing what the effect is when you combine different combinations of words and say it with a different emphasis, just like the example of how in English there's many different words that sound the same, but you spell them different or you say them different and they mean different things. So within the context of the root cause of the problems that we face here in this planet Earth is that most people are speaking from a conditioned voice, not their own, unfortunately, because they don't know any better. And so this is one of the key issues. It's core and critical to understand when it comes to the body graph. It's that you have voices in your throat that are genetically keyed to something that's unique about you and critical to understand, critical to hear, to hear yourself talk, to know that that's a core authentic aspect of what you bring to the table or what you're all about. So within the context of the mind, you can see we have the head, the ashna, our inspiration and conceptualization process. When you're looking at this body graph and from the potential of the mind speaking or the voice in its relationship to our self-reflected consciousness, you can see three of those gates have words that are derived from the logic of the mind, the abstract of the mind, or the individuality of mind. That's the first thing to come to grips with. The second thing that you'll notice when you look at a body graph like this, and you see that there's no mm, energy, there's no direct connection to the motor functions in the body graph. They are purely, this is pressure and awareness. This awareness that operates all t over all time. It's not about making decisions. When you have a little story inside of your head about yourself and you come up with reasons why you should say or do something, you articulate it, you speak it, unless you're a mental projector and you found certainty, that's not your way of making decisions. That's not listening to yourself talk outwardly over time with different people is the way. But in this context, with this kind of design, the mind inside of your head about yourself is always going to trip you up. It's a spokesperson for any place that is white in the design. And unfortunately, most of us believe the I inside of our mind, which Ra would call gas of the brain. It really isn't great for making decisions. So every single one of these throat gates having a voice and the most profound thing to understand is that you need, it's a genetic requirement, you need to listen to your true voice to understand where it comes from. So it's very, very critical to understand, for anyone to understand where their voice comes from, where their words come from, because they don't just come from the mind. They don't. 
there's all these other voices that can speak. They speak in relational context to life. So when you're talking about your design, remember everyone has everything. You either have activations that are dormant in the design. So just to recap, refresh everybody on terminology. These are dormant gate activations, you know, communication traits, you could say. And then we also have fixed, these are fixed, but they're dormant. We have fixed active gates, these functional gates that are a part of the definition because they're hanging off of centers that are defined. So here's definition, 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 definition. The student of the life, the life lived through you in deciding in response with emotional clarity is what is going to resolve any communication issue that you have. So it's not just about the nuances and subtleties, although I'm taking you the next step. It's about understanding the life aspects, these dormant potentials that you are speaking with that are undefined in you because the center itself is undefined. What happens is our mind can get really caught up or overwhelmed with trying to make the inconsistent consistent, and they're never going to be. So when we let that go of thinking that we have to have our insights all correct or be able to share our ideas or be able to express what we are in this moment or be able to, you know, have a consistent fixed sense of identity and direction, whatever the case may be that the mind gets caught up in because your mind tells you stories and it lies and inside of the conceptualization process, any place that's white in your design, all of these places that are white in your design, your mind has a spokesperson and tells you to do something contrary to the nature of your response, in this case, with emotional clarity. So it's not just about what you have activated, these are dormant, or on and fixed and functional. It's about the totality of what you're here to offer and give and breathe and be as a human being and we are all developmental we all strongly have this ability to develop and grow so voice is important when we understand communication it's quality of the voice so the voice in relational context this one happens to be mine my voice is in an undefined function and it's going to give you a quality of focus. My mind usually goes, why am I going into so much backstory and detail? Well, my voice tends to do that. And I can't control when or how that's going to happen. Anytime you have a dormant gate activation. So going back to the designs again. This is my design. It's a dormant gate activation. Just hanging. You can call these hanging as well. Hanging out there waiting. What are they waiting for? They're waiting to get turned on by life experience. So when they get turned on, and they get turned on all the time, you could breathe on me, and Lavina's sacral energy resource lights up and within the context of uh, life experience, planetary movements, you know, the current transits, whatever's happening in the transits, or somebody just walking by. You know, I live with people who turn on my sacral be they have their own sacral or together we have a temporary definition by learning about that relational context with each other. This is almost always getting hooked into learning about life. These are little hooks, okay, dormant potentials. So when you have a dormant potential on the unconscious design side, the mercury is literally your voice. Okay, your voice, the quality of your voice. And you can see it's not in the throat. So that's another thing we're going to look at at your charts. And when we work with charts in the second part of class is take a look at where in the body graph is your voice giving, this, this, giving us this quality, you, this quality. Or what value is it in? The line quality, the activation. Is it up or is it down? not just what's connected up to the throat and what has the consistency or inconsistency of being able to communicate. 
So in this context, you can see over here, we actually have a lot going on, another communication challenge, a lot going on on this side because we've got not only Mercury, which is about the voice, but we've got the unconscious relational values as well as Saturn. Saturn is a big heavy hitter. It can be very painful and feel punishing when you're not obeying your response and emotional clarity. So it's not, not a surprise to have someone like this here to help us learn about how communication issues can show up. Okay, so that's another thing to take a look at when you're talking about quality of the voice. Not necessarily the words. Words are secondary, according to Ra Ruhu. So the quality of the voice comes from the unconscious Mercury. We learned that in advanced analysis training. If that's interesting to you, advanced analysis training at the International Human Design School, you can find it under Education and the Science of Differentiation College. You do have to have a minimum of rave cartography to enter the college, and you'll need to have the analyst's training before you graduate from the Science of Differentiation College. College, just letting you know that that is a prerequisite to have your graduation from the college. Okay, so resonance and dissonance. If you don't know these terms, we use them in design to talk about line qualities that are either going to be harmonic, resonant, or dissonant, similar in nature or very different in nature, to put it very simply. We also use it deeper in the layer of looking at charts with respect to colors on the body side. So that's another thing that we're going to look at relative to where is the issue? What is the challenge? Not that it's going to necessarily help you if you don't follow your decision making strategy and honor yourself as your authority. Okay, that is the most important thing. But as an example, dissonance can be really loud. It can bring a problematic function to whatever it's associated to. And you can see in my body, my voice is dissonant to my body, my brain body system. Whereas my environment, my voice is resonant. There's also deeper layer things that we can go to, and that's the work of a differentiation degree practitioner. Why I have a prerequisite of at least going through rave cartography before you take this class. Because you want to be familiar with your design and how everything functions in order to go to this level. These gates in your throat, whatever your throat gates are, they're a key to you because it's something that you absolutely need to hear, your own voice. Your voice is critical. These voices of the throat, everything about life, your voice, these conditioning voices that are not yours are also something that you want to be aware of and pay attention to. So what is yours in the design, within the context of the design? The genetic imprints, whenever there is a gate activation, that's either here we have defined gates, here we have functional hanging gates, and here we have gates that are in a center that are undefined. They're still active, but they're dormant potentials waiting to get activated. And that's because we don't have a channel. We don't have definition to the throat. So what happens is any one of these other voices, 62, 16, 20, 31, 33, 45, 12, 35, they're all going to be conditioned voices that you could borrow you could speak with. The ones that have incredible pressure, there's actually just one here. One that has incredible pressure is this I am voice that's right here. So to simply know the mechanics that when you hear yourself say, I am this, I am that, and you're talking about your behavior especially, that that's a, a voice that's coming outside of you, not unique to you. It's not authentic to you. So to know that your I believe voice or your I know voice or that your contribution, your voice of contribution, when it's called out of you, is something that you can trust. The insistence of knowing or the desistence, I don't know. The certainty of expression of contribution or the uncertainty. Anybody who hears somebody talk with strong uncertainty in the voice, you can hear when that person is uncertain, wishy-washy, 
moody, not in the mood to communicate. These are potentially moody expressions. So from the context of being able to look deeper into the design, of course, type, strategy, and authority, most important thing. But within the context of understanding mechanically what's going on, this can be supportive, especially if you're a student of design, any student of design, to know that the conditioning forces are there and that you don't have to worry about those conditioned voices. You don't have to make a decision because of what you hear come out of your mouth. In this context especially, the emotionality is the dominating decision-making factor or deciding factor, not what happens to come out of the mouth. Such a clear mechanical truth and yet most people because they're identified with the I inside their head about themselves when they hear themselves speak in order to avoid looking inconsistently intelligent or you know trying to have a better sense of identity people might hear themselves say something and then try to follow up on that rather than going with what they're emotionally clear about in this case so from the perspective of those conditioning voices, these voices all have a formula. You learn about these in your human design foundations. Because if we can look at life and reduce suffering, it protects life. Okay? Everything that makes life about suffering, that is resistance. Anger, frustration, bitterness, disappointment. When you are operating from a place of anger, frustration, bitterness, or disappointment, you're just going to get more of the same. Now, when you eliminate resistance, you get your life, and that's what it's all about. And when you get your life, you get to express or experience any one of these voices operating in alignment, either through wisdom potential that is specific. So let's go back to a chart again. Wisdom potential that is specific. Your specific teachers, planetary life aspects that are teaching you something uniquely, specifically about your design. Or any place that is open. See the 20 right there? Open. An open gate. Then we're learning about life. All the different ways the 20 can show up. Did you know that a body graph gate... 64 gates in the body graph. That gate can operate in 1,080 different ways. But when you have an activation, you have very specific points of imprinting, as we can see. It's not only very specific points in space, very specific planetary life aspects that you're learning about contextually with the life experience. So you, as a witness to this body living its life, get to experience what happens when you blurt your beliefs and you call attention to yourself relative to your expression of being. And how does that work for you when you haven't been initiated by life, when you're not in response and you're not clear? You learn what it's like for you. You're learning something contextually about you. It's personal personal in the sense of these are planetary life aspects. They're not wandering around the body graph, although this one is the wanderer, so it does have a, a stability through movement, you could say. But they are aspects that Ra asks you to listen to, to listen for, that are part of you contextually with the life experience. And that is something. So I remember going through LYD and, and going, wow, I have voices. I can listen to my voice. How wonderful it can be to know your voice. So the most important thing I can tell you that is a problem relative to communication issues, the source of communication issues, are the four types not operating in alignment. Okay, there are only four because generators and manifesting generators are one type of human being. The reflector needs to wait a lunar cycle once initiated to be surprised by life and operating from their lunar path, not from any outside forces, but from their own individual lunar pattern is what is correct for them. Generators are here to build 
life in response, living life in response through building a life that brings you satisfaction, doing what you love to do with your energy, you're aligned to speaking or acting or even manifesting in accordance with what you came here for. Manifestors are here to initiate or inform in order to have impact and then they experience their peace. So the manifester, this very powerful auric frequency field that can get the other types going on something. Projectors operate through mutual recognition and formal invitation to be an advisor who can guide. We guide others to success through systems mastery and knowing who the other is. So these four key components, there are billions of different kinds of human beings, but the strategy is the same for each of the four types. Okay, manifestor in form, generator respond, reflector, lunar cycle, wait for initiation by others or life, and projector, wait for recognition, that is the key. And when you're not operating in alignment with your form, this is your form, your auric frequency is you. It's what builds the body, not the other way around. The aura is you. So the aura creating your frequency field, your energetic blueprint, is what is designed to speak. Let the aura do the talking is one of those things that Ra would say. So within the context of aura, besides this person's design being generative, pure generative, the only purely emotional generator strength that we have in the body graph, we also see a very strong aura because Jupiter happens to be fixed and active, a functional gate, same with the moon, okay? So fixed and active in a defined center, that means then this Jupiter, this aura, can be affected by that 38, pulling on it or pushing on it, depending on the connective field between you and an other. Did you know your aura breathes? It morphs, it shifts, it changes, it expands, and it contracts. In response, what does your shape of your body tell you relative to your comfort level with others? Sometimes have you noticed that thrill or zing of energized excitement with somebody and with somebody else you get exhausted, you get fatigued. So it's about alignment of frequency. Remember how we said the voice is part of our nature of frequency chemistry that is a part of our nature that we're designed to listen to relative in context with life. So it's a critical aspect to understand that the aura and the body is the life. So that's where we're going to take a little gander around the gates of the body graph that are about communication within the mandala wheel. We're going to begin with the gates that are pointed up at the Ajna center. These gates are really unusual because we're all called them metamorphic gates. They translate life, light into sound. So they are more than just receptors of mental concepts, the opinions or insights or ideas. They translate, they're great translators of mental concepts into language because language is not only there in the Ajna center in your mind, the language actually emerges from the throat. So these are communicative, the primary communicative gates, Ra calls metamorphic gates, translators of mental concepts into language. That thinking, knowing, and believing, when you hear yourself say, I do or don't think, know, or believe, there's a frequency to it, a quality to the voice qualities of the differentiating factors like what planet is it in or what line is it in but there's always going to be a this and that just like lines have mostly this and that we have the unreasonable or reasonable thinking we have the insisting or desisting knowing and we have the belief of hope or the despair 
without the belief. Now, the signpost of these up here, if your type is projected, these are projected elements, their bitterness. The solution to this is always to come from a place of invited communication. Now, you have to change that within the big picture view context of somebody's design. If that person is manifested, it comes from a place of whatever is moving them, their authoritative process moving them to initiate. And the signpost then would be irritation, then anger, relative to the overall frequency field. Generators would be frustration. So signpost, I want you to remember that for your type. It's the most important gift I can give you. It's the most important gift life is giving you. That bitterness for the projector, signpost, you're off track. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Don't go any further. Stop complaining. That's not going to get you anywhere. And come back to, have I been recognized? Do I recognize in return? Is this a mutually respectful, formal invitation for my gifts, my value that comes to the table? For the generator, going back to response, it's kind of like, do not pass go. Go back to the beginning. When you bump up against problem in the design, problems being frustration, anger, bitterness, disappointment, go back to your strategy. That's the most important thing, especially at the beginning. So thinking is part of the logical process. The problem is you might make a decision because of your shared thought process. Now, in the context of this design, I'm showing it to show you where the think voice comes from. But let's imagine that this is reversed and we have somebody who has a quality of planetary life aspect activation that has a 17 and they don't have the 62. Then when they're coming from a place of inauthenticity, they're going to say, I think, I think, I think, I think. And that's not their voice. This is this person's voice. Okay. Making mental decisions is never correct for anybody. This one needs to be through response. So the solution is always coming back to alignment. That's what I put here for short, aligned, okay, aligned. The solution for any problem that you're facing is go back to alignment. In response, sharing detail because a 62 is a detail expression gate. It has the ability, one of two detail gates in the design this one has the ability to articulate logical formulas that are reasonable, that are in recognition of what's to come into the future, logical. And then sometimes they can be unreasonable as well. That's how you know where it's coming from. Now within the context of this design, it happens to be Yoko Ono, you can see that she is emotional in nature. She's a triple split. So she says here, I think energy is the most important thing that we can give to people as performers. Anything else is a little bit pretentious, but energy is not. You can see where her gate activation brings planetary life imprints or blueprints, her genetic potential, is that Pluto was there consciously in the first line of routine, unconsciously in the third line of discovery. This is the gate of details, preponderance of the small, caution, patience, and detail produce excellence out of limitation. So her design by nature, one of her genetic imprints, voices, is to listen to her think voice. Now again, remember, we have to put it into context. This is a triple split. She's designed to synthesize large amounts of information in response with emotional clarity. Everything will work perfectly, regardless of whether it's a dormant potential, just hanging out, waiting to be activated by life, or it is within the defined center context, a functional gate activation that's learning about life contextually through the 17s that she meets, whether that be in transit or as a person. Now next we're going to use Ra as an example for the individual process. The problem here is you blurt things. Have you noticed? You tend to blurt before we really know what you're talking about. Oh, 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 I know, I know the answer. Think about little kids in school raising their hand. I know, I know, I know, pick me. 
you know, but maybe when you start to talk or when they start to talk, have you ever noticed the, the little kid who was so excited to speak and then all of a sudden they didn't know how to articulate? They knew, but they didn't know how to explain. Here's uh, the ability to structure unique individual insights into concepts that are much more simple. You know, assimilation is breaking things down into simple. A sign of genius is breaking down complex into simple. That's why we have type strategy and authority. Everything pointing back to type strategy and authority in human design. So solution, align. Come back to your decision-making process, whatever it happens to be for you. And then here, what we're talking about is explanation. You're learning within the relational context. If you have a personal 23, it's part of your individual nature. It can be empowered or it can feel disempowered. Now, individuality is always going to be about empowerment or not. And it has a tinge of moodiness, sadness, melancholy. Another word you can use here. So there's this melancholy over not being able to efficiently explain one's knowing. So here within this relational context, this is where, remember how I said Saturn can be kind of painful? Saturn within the context of this chart can feel quite punishing. If you're not obeying your own values and laws, Saturn kicks you in the butt and it's painful and it's punishing. So feeling any, any place in your design, particularly Saturn's, they're great signposts. Any place in your design where you feel sad or, or pained or punished because you can't explain what you know or what you believe. You want to e explain things. You want to share yourself with others communicatively. And yet, because there's an inconsistently see to the definition in this design, it can feel really uncomfortable and you feel like, oh, I got to hold back. I can't say anything. Now, it's one of the truths about freaks. Okay, we are freaks who are individual in nature. I'm a spokesperson for the freak, <laughs> as well as raw explaining the nature of being a freak. It's better for us to desist. Okay, desist when we really don't know. I don't know. It's better. So get comfortable with saying, I don't know. Now, that's really hard. I'll tell you, I'm right there with you. If you've got this in your design, hard to say, I don't know, when you've got an undefined ashna, the conceptualization process. So we can see undefined asha. I know. Oh, it's hard to say, I don't know. Because the mind doesn't want to look stupid. I'll tell you right off the bat. It doesn't want to look inconsistent. Here's fear of ignorance for Levina's 24. Yeah. Not being able to explain oneself makes you sad. And it can feel, in this case, because it's Saturn, painful, punishing. Yeah, maybe what happens is you try to explain what you know, and it was offensive to the other person. And they're like, you freak. Yeah, you get that once, and boy, is that painful for the rest of your life. You freak? What the heck is she talking about? People walking away, shaking their heads. So then what happens when you have that kind of pain in your life? Whatever it is that you said, that kind of pain in your life, you stop talking. Now, all of us, our voices become a kind of mask that we wear. Our voices are communicative in nature. They express the nature of what we are. So when your voice is disempowered, what kind of problems does that bring when you can't articulate? Relational dynamics, they require articulation right? Business, work, family. We need to talk. So when you don't trust your voice, ouch, painful. I can remember uh, being in a long distance relationship with a mental projector who had this channel here, okay? And all I could do was just sit there and nod my head and, and, and agree or not because I didn't want to look stupid. <laughs> what does that do to your communication, your relational dynamics? Oh, oh, sorry, non-existent. It doesn't work. So that's one of the things that we're going to play with in this class. Now, Ra says, I've said I know so much in my life. I tell you, it's weird. I know, I know, I know. It comes out when I don't even know what I'm saying I know to because it's just a program. I know, I know, I know. And when you hear him teach, you can hear him say, I don't know, as well. That happens. 
Here's Lavina with her 23. Also with the 1-8 being unconscious, I know what it's like to say something and not have any idea what I'm talking about. From the beginning of the human design experience, especially when I started to let go of the pain of communication, in the beginning, could not talk in group. There would always be a lump in my throat and a sadness that would rise and my voice would quaver. Any group didn't matter. I could not talk in groups. I could not talk like this to you. I could not communicate. My brain body system was so screwed up, I couldn't string words together in such a way that they were understandable. They would continually loop. And I couldn't follow my own train of thought, much less anybody else's train of thought. So I'm telling you from experience, if you're new to the experiment, if it's only been a couple years yet, have faith. Because it takes some years to decondition the brain body system to get the body on track and in the right place so that your personality construct is seeing things clearly and that your mind is motivated correctly. When you're following your decision-making strategy, honoring your authority, this is part of the deconditioning process and the years, seven years that it takes to decondition, you emerge quite literally a new being. Ra's promise to you, you decondition and you re emerge with a more relaxed body. The frequency changes. So your most important thing is to get your frequency right. It doesn't matter how much you study or how much you think you've mastered in human design. It's about getting your frequency right, which begins with operating in alignment. Okay, we're going to look at the abstract process and then we'll take a break. So from the perspective of abstract, this is hope and despair of the I believe voice. Now the problem here is making decisions from shared beliefs. Maybe they're not even your beliefs. As an example here, when you look at this chart, just like I did before, I didn't do it with the, with the 2343. But here I'll use this one as an example because we're looking at somebody who has a 56. I believe they're here to stimulate other people in alignment. So whatever their authority process is, following their decision-making strategy, they can stimulate. They can instill faith or hope or belief in a new way forward for humanity because of the lessons learned from the past. It's abstract in nature, part of the abstract process. It's experiential. So the problem that can come here is maybe their conceptualization function got all hopped up on some idea and they're making mental decisions and because they insist that they have this fixed belief, whatever they believe to be true is true for them because they have this defi defined in their design. But then they're not coming from a place of integrity, their authority. They're coming from mental conditioning. Okay, so coming from their curiosity about somebody else's life rather than living their own life, you know, coveting somebody else's life. What happens is they're not honoring or obeying their nature because it's conditioning relative to their design. Now let's flip it and go, okay, so if they don't have the 56 and they do have an 11, guess what is a mental conditioned voice that's coming out of their mouth that they think they have to follow or trust because they said it. I have to prove I'm intellectually concerned, cons consistent, there we go, consistent about what I am certain of. So then the mind says, okay, well, I said I believe it. I've got to follow through on my beliefs. Or you're being conditioned by life by others. Is that belief really true for you? Is it authentic to you and your nature? Is it right for you? Or is that something that you can actually let go of? Only your decision-making strategy will give you the key. And the signpost, again, critical key, core signposts, you're going to be able to follow your response, and it's satisfying. Generators, follow your recognitions and invitations, and it's sweet. Projectors, follow your peace through your initiating capacity. Manifestors, follow your design, your lunar cycle, if you are a reflector in nature. Follow you. Follow the body. The body is the life. The body gives you sign posts. Frustration, anger, bitterness, disappointment, regardless of your design, they're all 
problems. And when you're trying to avoid those problems by making a decision to avoid those problems, you're even further lost and probably confused. So from the perspective of this example here, I have, who do I have here? Let me pull up the presenter view. I forgot to put her name in here. This is Victoria Beckham, that's right. So she's got the wanderer in the earth. Third line, alienation. Gate of stimulation, it's called stability through movement. The perpetuation of continuity through the linking of short-term activity. She says, I want my kids to have a good work ethic. I believe you can achieve anything if you work hard enough to get it. Now, she is here to work. As long as it's empowering in response, she's emotionally clear. Loving work is one of her wisdom potentials because it's one of the ways that she's got to connect up to the split in her design. See, wisdom, wisdom. But also something that, you know, most of the population, a majority, vast majority, either have or are conditioned by this because the current background frequency has this as a channel community part seeking a whole so how do we seek the whole within the community she's conditioned to think it's about the love of work and working hard is that really true as a belief structure to instill to your children okay my kids example what if she's got a mental projector child i don't know but what if she's got a quad right variable oh boy that would be a really challenging conditioning field to grow up in, I can tell you. Knowing quad rights and knowing mental projectors who are not here to go and work hard or work long hours, whereas this one can. We are also very different. If you've just joined us, welcome. This is the International Human Design School, a first class free on communication problems, source and solutions. If you do have a question, feel free to type into the chat or raise your hand. I'm happy to help. And if you're interested in joining us, again, we are at ihdsschool.com. If you go to that website and hover over education, you're going to see general and continuing education. And we have lots of live courses. This is one of them, the communication problems, source and solutions.